here with Lauren Elizabeth Fine Art. I have another animal painting tutorial for stress relief planned for you today. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna be doing something a little different. It's acrylic paint on paper. Now you're welcome to use canvas. And this is of an adorable little donkey. It's actually a miniature donkey called Cooper. It's an abstract painting that I just hope will inspire you by the paint palette I chose, as well as the whimsical style of the donkey. And if you're interested in the painting that I completed for this tutorial, all the links are in the description box below, as well as reference photos for this tutorial. Uh, I would really recommend printing that out before starting this painting. Now, if you're interested in exploring more animal art, especially in the field of stress management, I've actually created an online animal art masterclass for both beginners and advanced artists that are just looking to reduce stress and anxiety. And for example, the painting that's behind me is an elephant that I made in tutorial for my students and I make it very easy to follow. I break it down into sections. I provide a printable class notes list and materials list, and everything is provided at your convenience. You can watch them. And if that's something you're, you'd be interested in, just make sure you check out the description box below. But without further ado, guys, let's get painting. <music> Alright friends, let's get started. First of all, I have all the materials in the description box below and hopefully you have your reference photo right next to you. But we're going to get started with our painting. Now all the colors I have listed um, to our right and first color is going to be white and our light blue. And I'm just painting this first part as the darker tone for the nose of the donkey and as well as parts of the eye but I'm just basically putting this uh, instead of just using plain white I don't want to start with my highlights first I want to start with my low lights and as a little bit more abstract I am using blue so we're just gonna paint that you don't want your brush on if you're using paper like I am you don't want your brush shopping wet and that's just because I don't want to have this this paper get super super wet even though it's being t it's taped down I still want to kind of put this on relatively thick and so here I just added actually a little bit of white because I thought it was a little too dark definitely add a little bit more white if you see fit this is just laying down paint this is not making hair I'm really just applying the paint in the spots. It's just placement of paint right now. I'm just adding this to the eyes. Throughout this tutorial, you're just going to be watching me and just where I place the paint. But by all means, feel free to email me, put them in the comments below if there's any questions that you may have. I also just, I, I haven't mixed any other color except for this blue for right now. And oftentimes when I paint, I am just mixing up one color or two colors at a time. And then I just place them in the spots that they, that I feel they belong. It's, it's quite easy technique. I just layer, just putting layer after layer. And I start with my darker tones first, and then I build up my highlights. So now I just did the ear. This is where the hair, the, we're gonna go in later with plain white and we're just gonna create hair to this part of the ear. But this is just the base part. And I also didn't mention, um, I have, I did say that I, that we're following a reference photo, but for the drawing, 
I don't show you how to do the drawing, but try your best to draw the reference photo as best you can. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we just paint right over it. But I would definitely recommend using a colored pencil or a graphite pencil. Nothing too dark or else you'll have a hard time painting over that. You might have to do way too many layers to cover that up. So like I said, we use this blue quite a bit. We're just placing it in the areas that a lot of the white is placed on the donkey. So I, I don't want to start out with white. I want to start out with a darker tone. So sometimes people will just go on with a gray, but I find that far too boring. So I will make a light blue. make sure you have enough of this blue made. As you can see, I am adding quite a lot to the start of this painting. And I'm just looking, like I said, I'm looking for where the white in the donkey is because this is going to be the base of that highlight. I didn't want to start with my browns. I was so excited to use this color palette and just test. The, these are colors that I never often use together and very excited to just go straight in with the blue and not with the darkest tones, which is what I tend to, to start with. So now I'm mixing my dark brown. This is the darkest dark. This um, is going to go in where there's not much sunshine hitting. And so that is in areas like the leg, the lower lip. We're gonna put it on shadows. This adorable little donkey has like an afro going on. So we're gonna be putting this brown in areas where this, the hair is kind of folded over his eyes. And then of course the nostrils, areas that just really aren't getting much sunlight. This part of the eye is a little tricky because in the reference photo we don't really see the eye, we just see the shadow. I kind of made it look like this, almost like this triangle with three little angles. But don't worry if that's not perfect, we're gonna, we can always go fix that later. So I'm, I'm kind of going over my sketch in the areas that, with the lines, and I am using the side of my brush to create hair looking lines. They can actually be quite thick because we're going to create more hair with a different color over top, but still sh showing the, the dark brown. Now, I apologize if I'm kind of sporadic. I am pretty much a sporadic painter. I don't, I, I get antsy, I get bored, I can't stay in one section, so I kinda skip around, so I apologize for just my, my process can be a little chaotic.
as far as it goes with the hair on the head and the like the bridge of the nose I kind of sweep my brush from back back and forth it's a detail brush that is it's a flat detail brush and so that allows me to kind of get that straight edge but there's so much hair on this donkey that I really try to sweep it back and forth to create that wispy abstract look that I'm look I'm going for See, here's where I'm starting to go over my colors. You can see that I'm I'm still covering it s s um, partially so that you can see the, the blue from when we first started this painting. And I do that a lot throughout my paintings. Like I will go over parts, but I'm not totally covering it. And I'm, I wanna go over it in a way that still kind of looks like hair. And again, that's just using the side of my brush. And I really try not to leave much white when I do that. Now obviously you can still see the white, we're going to go over it with other colors, but like here, I'm trying my best to not leave any little tiny specks of white because that whole section should be dark brown. Sorry about my hand being in the way. It's uh, tricky when your camera's angled straight down. The hand can kind of make it a little difficult to see. I'm just basically finding the shadows where the lighter hair folds over. And so looking at your reference photo, this can be a little tricky to see, but I'm, I'm very sporadically finding these darker shadows and just placing them where I, I'm gonna be putting the lighter highlights over top. Now we'll get to the background later, but still try and make your brush strokes look more like hair. I completely finished my, for the most part, I finished my donkey and then I go in with my purple background. The very, very last step is just really get with my, with a skinny detail brush, making it look more like natural hair as opposed to these thick bristled hair strands. I'm still using the same brown, but I added a little bit of more raw sienna to it. I just wanted to kind of get a little bit more different difference in tone. And so I added a little bit more water, a little bit more raw, raw sienna for the body of the donkey.
Okay, so now I'm just washing out my brush. So right now I'm just mixing my next color, which is going to be my light purple. And this is just simply white mixed in with purple. And I am placing this, this is like my middle tone. I made this a little too dark, so you don't want it this dark. You want it a little bit lighter than this. So I went in and I added some more white, still doing that technique to capture the hair. And I don't want to leave any white. I want to, I, I want to put on this layer over top between the brown and the blue, but I really don't want to leave any specks of white. And that can be tricky. So just take your time. Now on your reference photo, you're basically looking for a lighter brown than the darkest brown that we we started painting. That's the color that I'm kind of looking for to make, to paint with this light purple. So if that makes any sense, I, instead of using, instead of applying that, that medium brown, I'm just adding the, the purple in that place. And so that's how I find out where to put the, this purple. Now, when I did the top of the nose, I found like that was too dark. So I added quite a bit more white to that just to lighten up the, the top of the nose where the sun's hitting, more like a lavender. And I just love this purple. It's the same color that I use for my background. I end up using this lavender quite a bit after this. Add white to that previous purple that I made. You notice that my brush strokes are getting more wispy, getting more loose. This is where it's really fun. Just loosen up your wrist and not trying to make things perfect, but just getting real loose with it and allowing yourself to open up to things not looking perfect and just applying paint in the right spot. So instead of thinking about all oh, making this hair perfect or making sure there's no white specks, just think about the color that you're using and just about the movement that you're doing on the paper and just think about placement as opposed to perfection. Now, because we're getting a lot more light on the top of the head, I'm gonna add quite a bit more of this purple to the top of the head. <laughs> like I said, I'm very sporadic, so I'm gonna move from spot to spot. Now the hair 
this donkey has like an afro going on so hair is really wispy it's really just it's so cute he's got so much hair on the top of his head it's amazing i'm just rounded that nose around the nostril the sunlight is hitting the right side of his body and so it's going to be a lighter purple around that snout compared to the other side so now I'm mixing up one of my favorite colors, raw sienna, with a little bit of uh, Naples yellow. And I'm just going to paint that right over top the colors that I made, still making sure to leave some of those colors shining through. Now this color on your reference photo is somewhat similar. It is like this light brown. And you can find that by just looking right in the areas that I'm placing it. This is going to be somewhat similar to the reference photo. Now for his hair, I like to take his hair pretty high. I exaggerate this part a little bit just because I want to just really show how much hair this donkey has. <laughs> So as you can see, I'm trying to bring some highlights to this donkey while also making sure I cover up the white. The only other color that we have left to use is like a, is Naples yellow. And that's going to be adding those highlights, but I also want to start adding some highlights with this color too. Oops, I dropped my brush. If you do this, that's okay. Acrylics are very forgiving. We can always paint right over it. It's important that when you're doing this that you make sure your paint isn't too thick. I am constantly using one color and then just applying it to different areas and forgetting to use my water. So. Do not forget to do that because what, what actually happens is that you're, as you're doing hair, the hair becomes too thick. And that is actually a little bit what happened here. I was, I had so much paint dried to my paintbrush that it was making the hair look a lot thicker than I kind of wanted it. So make sure you use that water. Okay, so I've added some Naples yellow to my paint. It's not directly Naples yellow yet, but I'm just adding with my washed out detail brush, I'm just adding Naples yellow over top to add the main highlights. Just still using that wispy effect, especially in the hair. I love this part because I really feel like we start to see the personality and the 
nature of this donkey shine through with just adding these highlights. And I know you're probably itching to do that eye. Most artists will finish the eye first. I did not finish the eye first and I just jumped around. I get so color happy that I want to tackle that first. And so, but we'll get there. That's actually coming up next. So these highlights get applied to where the sun is really hitting and it's definitely going to be hitting the ears and the side of the face and the side of the body. I'm moving on to my white. Now we started with a blue and that was going to be our base color for the parts that were white on the donkey. So now we're just taking straight titanium white and very loosely applying that to the snout, applying that to the eyes, basically every place that we put that light blue. And you can tell that I'm really not painting this in. I'm just applying it so that we can still see some of that light blue shine shine through from the bottom. And I'm kind of doing a dry brush technique where I am doing that, where I'm adding just a little bit of paint to my brush and I'm just putting it over my paint just to kind of give it that translucent look so that I can see the colors that I previously painted a little bit better. Now I lost my eye a little bit as I was painting these colors, so I really think it's important that you, you round that eye like I'm doing here. And I also lost that other side. So we're just gonna redefine that. And then applying that those long ear hairs. Now when we do the background, you're likely going to lose some of these long ear hairs, so that's okay. We're going to go back. That's actually a detail step that we'll take after we paint the background. All right, so like I promised, we're finally doing that eye. And using my very skinny detail brush, I'm just creating that eye. And I left the highlight there, but later I end up filling it in. You can leave it or you can fill it all in. We're, we're still going to place that highlight later. And I actually use that color just to pull out those low lights that we applied last time. I, I, my, like I told you before, my brush was getting too thick. And so with this detail brush, I really wanted to find the dark hairs, really just want to create contrast and pull them out and especially really making them look more like donkey hairs.
Okay, so the next color is actually quite unusual. I used l the pale blue with my raw sienna. And I wanted to create like a gray. And it did make a gray. And I, I liked it so much that after I applied that to darken that um, eyelid underneath the eye, I applied it to the rest different parts of the donkey. Still using that skinny detail brush. I just like this color so much that I just wanted to further add some more character. I just randomly placed it on the body, on the face. So before I went in with my white in the eye to make that highlight, I wanted to, I'm using my detail brush to start combining colors but better. And so what I mean by that is I'm just making the colors blend in better with just the definition of the hair. And so I'm doing that with this eye, around the eye. There's some parts that look too choppy they look too flat and I want to just redefine that. I do that quite a bit towards the end and just using my detail brush to create that hair. See the, the, the difference in color between the snout and that light brown is just too blunt and so I use my detail brush to create to blend it sort of with just that hair, that the look of the hair. I woke up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. na, na, na. And I wondered how you're always right It gets me I couldn't see what you saw in me mm -hmm. But you showed me how to believe Still gets me When I look back I can see Yeah, I will love you for it 
It is hard to share my thoughts. Ooh, na, na, na. It's like I, I went back in with my burnt umber to further pull out the, the low lights, the dark tones in the legs, but and then the side. Just give me some time cause I need to know that you're staying And then I, went, I jumped around and then went back with my white to put in the, that last highlight in the eye. Now this highlight is really simple. You just use your detail brush to put those two, the one dot, and then that little line on the eyelid. Okay, so what we're in what's called tone up stage. We're basically just we're going back to the colors that we previously used and just applying them to further combine the painting so it's more cohesive painting. And I used straight Naples yellow to put in some more highlights and also just to combine the colors a bit better, making it look more like hair, just applying those all over where the highlights were, would I see on my reference photo. All right, so now we're moving on to the background. And the background does not have to be purple, guys. You can make yellow background. You can make a light blue background. I, I think it looks so pretty to pull out colors that we've already used, but my goodness, you can use a green background. But I just made a lavender background, which is just quite a bit of white mixed in with my violet. And I just used a my fat flat brush to paint all around using the edge of it to get in the nooks and crannies. You can add more white in some sections. I kind of added more white to the purple closest to the donkey because I wanted to give it some more character. But then once you've completed that background, just take more time if like we said before to go back like the hair the eyelid hair around the 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 afro that he's got 
to redefine the hair because we kind of go over it as we're doing the background. As you get closer to finishing up your background, just make sure you wash out your brush and then grab that detail brush, the skinny one, and just redefine the hair that we, you may have gone over while doing your background. So this is just more tone up, more fixing up what we want for the final last touches, and then we're done. Congratulations, you are done. I hope that was fun. I hope that was relaxing. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I look forward to seeing you in the next animal painting tutorial. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you later. Bye.